I am Shadrick Togozani, the plant safety officer for this Lafarge Hosim plant in Malawi. I want to welcome you here at Lafarge where we are in the process of doing an induction to prepare you for your safe stay, for your safe visit of our plant, for your safe drive within our yard. The first thing that we want you to understand and appreciate is how our plant has been aligned, has been designed and how you're going to move around our plant. We have put in place this circulation plan to assist you to see which places needs PPE and which places are supposed to have PPE in place. When you look at this circulation plan, it's got two sections. One section is just describing what we as Lafarge would like you to observe. And the other section is clearly indicating which areas need protective clothing and which areas do not need protective clothing. As you enter our gates, there are two books that you'll find. The guards will receive you and they'll give you a book where you're required to register who you if you are an employee, they'll give you an appropriate book. If you are a visitor, they will sign you in with a visitor's card. After signing you in, they will also test you for alcohol. Please accept to take this test. It's very important for our organization. When they take the test, whether it is positive or negative, you will be required to log yourself in a book that will indicate the status and you have to sign for that status. In the event that you have tested positive, you will not be allowed to proceed. They will seek assistance from the health and safety manager or the plant safety officer to come and advise on the way forward. But there is a straight answer to such a situation that you will not be allowed entry into our gates. For the vehicles, when they have signed you in, the guards will ensure that you are buckled on a seat belt before they allow you entry into our yard. They will also ensure that you are not talking on the phone. They will also ensure that you are not carrying a passenger at the back if it is a pickup. To drivers, we are saying they should observe speed limits of 20 kilometers per hour when they are inside our yard. Drivers should observe reverse parking when they are in our yard. Bicycles within the plant area also are not allowed because we have a lot of heavy equipment that are moving around. After signing in for pedestrians, they are advised to get into the plant using the walkways. We demarcated the walkways to separate the pedestrians from the vehicles that are very dangerous and hazardous. As you take the walkway to your right, the first building that you see is our restaurant. And as you walk past the restaurant, there is a change room, contractor change room. This change room was specifically constructed to cater for our contractors. Immediately after the change room, that's where now you see a crossing. It is a crossing. It was designed for pedestrian to cross, but our warning is, although it is a crossing, it is important to be mindful because it is a crossing because there are a lot of mobile equipment that are crossing. Ensure before you cross that the place is safe. That is very important for every pedestrian. After crossing to your right, is a plant office and when you cross we walk past plant office there is a workshop where now this free zone where you can walk without PPE ends as you enter the workshop where a lot of lockers are people change that's where the freeway ends as 
we walk through the walkway, there is a place where we have indicated that if you are not safety conscious, don't go beyond this point. The idea behind is that we need to get everybody understand that the area that we are entering will require our commitment to safety. In trying to communicate effectively with everybody that enter the plant, we've put a lot of man-made signs, signages, right from the main gate. It is important to realize that these signs have been placed in those places to communicate, to talk to us. There are messages in there, there are warnings in there. For vehicles that have come to deliver raw material, that is clinker, gypsum, pozzolana. For vehicles that has come to load our cement, we have requirements that the transporter need to understand and appreciate. The traffic march will ensure that the vehicle has a fire extinguisher, a triangle, the tires are in good condition and that the seat belt is working. For the sake of safety, we've entrusted our traffic marshals to ensure that they check validity of the driver's license. They also check fuel level in the tank to avoid that the vehicle gets airlock within our yard and has a breakdown. They also need to check coolant level. They also need to check engine level. They will ask the driver to activate the wiper to ensure that at least wipers are working. They will also ask the driver to horn to ensure that at least the vehicle is able to horn. The traffic marshal will also check underneath the vehicle to ensure that there are no oil leaks. They will also ask the driver to put on their lights in full and in dim. And they will also ask the driver to indicate both ways left and right. And they will also ask the driver to ensure that the hazard warning are on these are the most basic issues that the tra traffic marshal will first look at before allowing a vehicle to come in. Health and safety rules. Rule one, I assess and control risks before starting any task. Rule two, I only perform activities for which I am authorized. Rule three, I never override or misuse health and safety devices and always use the required PPE. Rule 4. I do not work under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Rule 5. I report all incidents. Living by these rules is a condition of employment. Health and Safety Policy Lafarge Horsim is the most advanced company in the building materials industry. We conduct our business in a manner that leads to creating a healthy and safe environment for all stakeholders, employees, contractors, communities and customers, built on a true safety culture. Health and safety is our overarching value. We believe in visible leadership and personal accountability for health and safety at all levels and throughout organization. Our commitment. We will conduct our business with a goal of zero harm. We will provide safe, healthy, and secure work conditions for employees and contractors. We will maintain a global health and safety management system designed to continuously improve our performance and actively manage risk in our business. We will comply with applicable legal, regulatory, industry, and corporate requirements. We will communicate openly with all stakeholders on relevant health and safety issues.
Welcome to Lafarge Wholesome Malawi. Because safety is our number one priority, we have implemented the Snakes and Hazards program. It's very simple. A snake is a hazard and the risk is the bite. Now on site, you need to look out for three snakes. The adder, the cobra and the python. Whether you are on walkways, in the road, on the plant or in the machine shop, these hazards will be clearly marked and visible. The first snake of snakes and hazards is the adder. The adder is a very difficult snake to see. They are very well camouflaged. In the workplace, we relate that back to the hazards that are difficult to see. For example, a tripping hazard like this pallet. This is the same color as the ground. People do not see this thing, they can trip and fall. Other examples of the adder in the workplace could be electricity or stored energy, both equally difficult to see. The cobra in Songo. So a cobra, what a cobra does is it spreads a big hood. The reason for this is to make itself look bigger. And they do this actually only for one reason and that's to give a warning, to show to you, listen, Iwe, I am dangerous, leave me alone, I'm going to bite you. Now with snakes and hazards we say the cobra resembles the hazards that give us a warning. We can see it is dangerous. For example, the loaders. These trucks are big, they are yellow, they've got alarms on them, and when they reverse they make a big sound, showing to us that this is dangerous. Working at heights, working with hand tools and speed limits are also other examples of cobras on the plant. All the type of things that gives us a warning in snakes and hazards, we say that is like the cobra. The last snake in snakes and hazards is the python in Sato. The interesting thing about pythons is when they are small, when they are born, they are completely harmless and in time as they get bigger they become more and more dangerous. The biggest python at Lafarge is dust. Fumbi. Dust gets into a person's lungs and after one shift you won't go home sick. But if you do not wear your dust mask again and again, little bit by little bit, the dust accumulates in your lungs creating a bigger health issue. Other examples of pythons include not reporting incidents, neglected maintenance and bad housekeeping. All of these things start small and it's not an issue but in time it becomes bigger and creates bigger issues. Oh, my name is Precious Jarira. I'm an NSC at Lafarge Cement Marawi. I'm the one managing this clinic. I started in 2011 September. Here at Lafarge Cement Marawi, most of the things which we see, we see five areas of health. The five arms that is occupational health, medical emergency, medical support services, health promotion, and stakeholders' health. In the five areas of health, the first thing is occupational health. On occupational health, most of the things we do on industrial hygiene, on industrial hygiene, we make sure that our factory and our plant is clean, is assessed. Like on industrial hygiene, we do the qualitative assessment that is on dust and noise. Of course, we invite experts who does the work. They come here and do the assessments of dust to see how the dust levels are there. We also assess the noise levels for the person and also for the uh, plant. And on the Operation health on the other things we should do we do the medical evaluation on medical evaluation that is the medical assessments on medical assessment we have five types of medical assessments pre-employment periodic job transfer sick leave and the last one exit medical assessment that is pre-employment that is whenever a person is coming to start work here we do the the physical examination, that is to check their health just to see how this person is. The other type of assessment which we do is periodic assessment. This periodic assessment, we do it every year. Of course, there are other people who are working maybe in risk areas. We assess maybe after six months just to check on their health. The aim of this periodic assessment is just to identify first if there is any problem so that maybe the person has a problem we need to treat it first in order to prevent complications the other type of assessment which we do is on job transfer suppose maybe a patient was working from was working on another department and has changed so 
we also do the medical assessment just to see if the other department this person will be fit the fourth assessment which we do is the sick leave if the person was sick and has been given sick leave for more than seven days this person is also given when he's coming back we have also to assess to do the medical assessment the medical assessment is just to see if the person is fit to work it's according to our environment and also according to the duties which we have the last assessment which we do is exit assessment whenever somebody is leaving this place we also do exit assessment just to compare the results on the pre-employment and also the results on the exit examination on occupation health and also on occupation health we have medical surveillance on medical surveillance it means our people here whenever they are here we send them to our referral hospitals where they go there and do the chest x-rays the chest x-rays they are done just because they are working on the dust environment so we just want to check their chest if they are okay so they go to um, big hospitals and they do chest x-rays just to see how their lungs are they also do lung function tests the other type of test they also do eye tests just to see how their eyes are they also we also do audiometry just to check their eyes if they are okay or if they have any problems and the last one we also do the electrocardiogram that is ecg we just want to check their heart if their heart is okay you know, if there is any problem that's on medical evaluation we see people maybe the others that are coming here maybe they have the respiratory infections they have maybe the skin conditions they come here and they we treat them we also recommend that maybe this person should be working on this type of job that is we have modified his or her duties we make sure that whenever they are knocking off they have to remove their dust so we make sure that in their change rooms they have the bathrooms so that they can shower before leaving here and also they can put on better clothes before going home yeah the other thing is on a medical emergency that's number two on a medical emergency we make sure that on medical emergency we are ready we know we are working on um, areas which may be emergencies can occur so on medical emergencies we make sure that we have all the equipments needed for emergencies we have trained first aiders who are trained on emergencies so that maybe something has happened the first aiders they can go and assist we have the first responders they are the ones who can go and assist maybe before the client reaching the clinic we have one ambulance which is based at my what hospital and it's about five minutes drive we have a document they are trained how we can handle the emergencies whenever people are coming here for the first time we have to induct them on this so that they know how they can handle emergencies on number three we have the medical support services on medical support services yeah it's like here the clinic um, we make sure that the people who are working here at clinic they are competent enough so that maybe they are supporting people we have the external network like i've said maybe when we are doing the medical surveillance i've said that we leave our people to other hospitals to do the chest x-rays on arm number four we have the health promotion and wellness on health promotion and wellness we do the we have things like gym exercises we know people here they are working on this environment so we want to have these exercises just to make sure that their bodies are fresh last one have the stakeholders health we try as much as possible also to make sure that other people who are surrounding us they are also health of course we have other activities which people around us they come to the clinic and we assist like maybe sti family planning art people around us they come and receive their treatment from this clinic people say here we don't allow stigma and discrimination everybody maybe who is hiv positive he has to work with lafarge cement malawi as long as he's healthy he's fit to work we tell him that we offer vct services others they come for hiv 
testing and counseling. We test them, and after testing them, as Lafarge, their policy, they provide food supplement to these people just to boost their nutrition. And also, maybe somebody maybe has got a kid, has got a baby. Lafarge Cement Malawi buys infant milk for for this newborn baby so that maybe the infant they cannot get the HIV. Okay, I'm Hastings Chipungu. I'm the parking plant supervisor, but I'm also a fire fighter. We are over 20 fire, fire fighters here. We do have fire crews. Each and every two years, we do have a refresher on firefighting. I was privileged last year. We had one conducted by the Blanta City Assembly, the one who are in charge of all the fires, all the emergencies. So I was privileged to be one of the participants on that training. Fire. Uh, let me just tell you about the fire triangle. In order to have fire, we need to have three components. That is oxygen, heat, and fuel. Suppose there is a fire here, okay, there is an emergency response procedure. Normally, uh, the one who has set the fire needs up to raise an alarm. The alarm can be talking, can shout fire, 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 or there is an automatic alarm, electrically coordinated. So you press a button, the siren for fire will come out. Then each and everyone need to go to an emergency fire assembly, despite whatever. But if you hear an alarm, you have to go to the nearest fire assembly. At fire assembly point, there is a local just to see how many people registered into the gate and how many have congregated at the fire assembly. So, like here, we do have three fire assembly. One at the web bridge, in front of head office, and also on the car washing bay. So, you can choose where to go, the nearest fire assembly. As a firefighter, you need to have equipment to extinguish the fire. It's about fire, but electrical. This is a shield, a shield, a shield. We use it in, in the substation, yeah. but this one is very good because the frame cannot uh, injure your eyes. Yeah, this fire extinguisher, you need to check that the seal is intact. Nobody has tampered with the seal. You must have a pin. A pin, this is a, like a lock. It's locking the pump so that nobody should accidentally push in the pump so that we can release some materials from the cylinder. We've got this housing, the cylinder, and we've got a dial. So the dial should always be on the green. It means this, this fire extinguisher is perfect. You can use this one. We have got also expired days, as you can see from here. It's about 12 months. So you need to check before using the fire extinguisher that uh, it's within the stipulated time, within the 12 months. When you want to extinguish the fire, you remove the seal, you remove the pin, you have to hold the pump. The hose should be aimed at the base of the fire just to get the heat out. Apart from this, we've got also the fire hydrant, the hose reels, and also we've got the pearls say at the pump station where we fill our fuel. My name is Cosmos Moyo. I'm working here at Lafarge Osim Cement as mechanical inspector. And apart from that, I'm also the first aider. Uh, what is the first aider? The first aider is a person who assists anyone who can get injured before a medical help. 
there are different types of injuries which we employees come across when we are working in the plant. In this two box, for first aid kit, there are materials which are inside this box. Someone got injured and blood is coming out. We use these plastic gloves. This is the way how we wear the gloves in order to avoid contamination or getting any infectious. We use this cleaner, cleaning the wound. Most of the times we use this wool and you clean that area. After cleaning, that means this is contaminated with blood, we take this and put it in this plastic bag. After putting in that blood, we take this gauze and apply to affected area. After applying on the affected area, in order to suppress the coming out of the blood, it depends upon the wound. There is this bandage we use to dress that wound. After dressing that wound, we use the scissors to cut and tighten the area. After injured, after a treatment, then there is this hard cover which we record date of the injured person, name of a person, whether it's employee or contractor, type of the injury, treatment we used, remark and your signature. If sometimes he has got a broken bone, we use these pads to support the injured or cracked part. For example, if it was the hand, that means injured somewhere here, then you put another one underneath, another one on top. We use also this to tighten the bandage which we have worked on the injured part. So if somebody has got a muscle cramp, we use this first act. It relieves pain and inflammation. Sometimes somebody can have an eye problem or an ear problem. We use this. If somebody has got some problems with breathing, in order to assist him, we use this at the mouth to mouth respiration. Uh, this is antiseptic for wounds which has been for a long time and it acts very fast. It's a good medicine. There is also this triangular bandage. For example, somebody has got injured on the hand. If he has got maybe injured somewhere here, we position the finger at an angle. And this helps uh, to prevent blood from coming out. And this bandage also holds the arm at this angle with the bandage going around the neck to support the hand so that blood shouldn't pulse out of the fingers. As I have treated somebody, now I'm about to take off the grooves. We start here because there's blood that means that blood must be inside this groove. And you work it, you drop them here. Then you take the first hand which you have popped, you insert inside. That's to avoid you getting contaminated with that blood. After removing from your hands, you take it, put it, drop it in that bin. Okay, I'm, I'm Steven Jambayo. I'm a management trainee, uh, quality engineer. My responsibility in general here is to uh, ensure the quality of uh, the final cement product uh, that we dispatch to the customer. There are a few steps, uh, starting from qu uh, quality control from uh, the raw material stage when we uh, receive, uh, for example, the, the clinker, 
uh, gypsum and the additive materials that we use, Bozlana and uh, Cori Sand. So the, that's the first uh, first level of quality control from, from the raw material stage. And from then, we then proceed towards the actual milling stage. During the, the, the milling of the, the, the various main products uh, themselves, we monitor a number of quality parameters just to make sure that uh, the cement that's being milled and going into the, the, the silos is of the right quality and it's also conforming to both the external standards. Uh, those are uh, the Malawian standards, which of course are equivalent to the, the British standards, and also our very own uh, internal standards. So. That is to make sure that the cement going into the silos is of the right quality. From there, again, going a step a step further now when the cement is being dispatched, I think that's also a very important step because especially with uh, the various cement products that we have, there's a very high probability of uh, contamination between the products. So if, uh, for instance, you're dispatching a very low grade co quality product and then you're moving upward, what you don't want is a, a little bit of, for example, more especially when you're starting off during the changeovers, there's a very high probability of mixing up uh, the lower grade product with the high grade product. That might uh, result in a lot of issues where we have com customer complaints, you know, where the customer tries to use a product and finds out that it's not performing, then, you know, there are those kind of issues. So that is the final step where the quality control comes in. Our main products that we receive, which is a clinker, there are a number of tests or parameters that we look for. One of the major ones is uh, the moisture content because we don't want a uh, clinker that has been rained on, for example, especially now during the rainy season, uh, during transit or, or at the port, because once the clinker gets wet, it starts to react. If we receive clinker of high, high moisture content, then uh, that is segregated as off-spec because it doesn't perform well. A few of the other parameters that we look at are uh, free line, for example. Also stuff like the liter weight of the, the clinker, which determines the, the grindability. If the liter weight is too high, for example, it, it makes it harder to grind in the mill, so you end up with the high residues, which also affects the cement strength. And uh, in gypsum, the, the main thing that we look at is uh, calcium sulfate, which determines the purity of the gypsum. The main aim of putting gypsum in cement is to retard the setting, because if you don't put in gypsum, then chances are it will set quickly which you know, creates some problems of workability and so on. So we want to look at the period of the gypsum. Uh, for example, in Pozzolana, which is uh, one of our additive materials we use, we look at uh, moisture content again, because if it's too wet, then it, it creates problems, especially mechanical problems in, within the plant. Uh, another thing that we'll look at is reactive silica in the Pozzolana, because Pozzolana, it has some hydraulic properties. So the higher concentration of uh, reactive silica then it also contributes to the strength of the cement. In quarry sand, uh, the main thing that we look at is just moisture content because, again, similar to Bozolana, if uh, the moisture content is too high, then it, it causes some uh, mechanical problems where the screws get jammed up and it's coated and so on. And during the cement milling itself, one of the main parameters that we look at is the, the sieve residue, um, also known as the R90. It's an indication of the fineness of the cement because the general relationship is the finer the cement, the higher the strength. According to our, our own internal parameters and, and the ranges that we, we put for the different products, we try to maintain uh, within the specification so that um, we don't, for example, exceed the, the, the required um, fineness for each of the, the cement products. And uh, some of the, the other parameters we look at, the sulfate content, the, the chloride content, for example. And because of the different, the, the different products that we use and you know, the differences in the compositions and, and everything, we need to be sure that uh, we're making cement of the right composition. So for that, we, we, we carry out a, a test known as a DMS, um, where it, it basically just allows us to be able to determine uh, the percentages of the different uh, the different materials within the cement. So um, in that we can be sure that the cement that we're milling is actually the right one because a cement pretty much looks the same so it, it, it can be hard to determine that. Finally, on dispatch, we need to be certain that we're dispatching uh, the right type of cement due to the different number of cement products and also the weight of the bags as well that's also another major issue because due to the variation of uh, the packer performance for example we could end up with a situation where um, one of the spouts is 
uh, making overweights or underweights and it, it creates problems where trucks may need to be returned in order to control the weights. We also we also monitor the, the bag weights so that even though, um, say for example, one spout is making underweights and another one is making overweights, the total weight of the truck may, t may, may balance out and it may seem as if uh, the weights are fine, but the end user, the customer, still bears uh, individual bags. So you don't want to be giving customers bags that are constantly underweight, for example. Going into a few of the hazards that uh, one might encounter working in the laboratory, there we might uh, classify two uh, basic categories. One uh, might be physical hazards and others uh, we might uh, classify as chemical hazards. The, the physical hazards mainly occur in the, the physical lab area where um, some of the activities taking place uh, like preparing of uh, the prisms for uh, strength tests, for example, because we use equipment such as uh, the mixer and the jolting table. So there, uh, if you have the hazards, for example, you have um, noise, especially for the jolting table, the jolting table where it, it makes a very loud noise. So there, um, you are required to put on uh, ear protection. And also there's, you know, when, when you're working with uh, rotating equipment, um, there's, always a, there's always a danger that, you know, um, for example, uh, a piece of clothing or something may be uh, jammed up within the, the, the rotating equipment. So there we have a shield to, uh, to protect against that. Because of the fine uh, nature of uh, the, the, the cement that we work with, there's always a hazard, for example, when me measuring out the cement portions for maybe strength test or setting time, or when uh, doing other tests, uh, other tests like uh, sieving, for example, there's always dust being, being emitted constantly. So, in that general area, um, you always find that whoever's working there always has a dust mask on. Now, moving towards the chemical side, where, um, for example, uh, quite quite a number of tests, especially on uh, raw materials, uh, like I mentioned earlier, free lime on uh, on, on on clinker and uh, reactive silica for for pozzolana. For, for these, um, we mainly work with a lot of chemical reagents. So um, for each one, we have a material safety data sheet where uh, every one operating um, or working with that particular procedure knows uh, exactly what the hazards associated with the, di the different chemicals that they're working with. And um, so for instance, uh, a chemical that we usually work with, uh, like uh, hydro hydrochloric acid, for instance, where, um, as you might know, the moment you just open uh, a bottle of HCl, for example, you want to dilute or you want to add into something, it, it gives off hazardous fumes. So we always make sure that we have uh, two fume from cabinets. So whenever you're, you're working with that, you're always um, working under that fume from cabinet so that the, the fumes that are emit, that are released from from the containers are not entering into the laboratory environment, but they're being sucked up. And also, one one other major hazardous chemical that we that we have uh, for the the DMS test that I, I talked about earlier, we use um, a substance called uh, TBE, which is uh, tetrabromethane. It's a very it's a very toxic uh, chemical. For there, we always make sure that uh, special care is taken. You always uh, have gloves on to protect uh, from contact with the skin. Also, you always working under fume hood cabinet so that you don't inhale. Yeah, so I think in general, uh, those are a few of the hazards that one might encounter. I'm Benjani Muhango. A mechanical supervisor. Actually, today we've got a task to unblock the cement hopper uh, for packer number two. Uh, the cement inside is uh, actually has solidified, so we need to break it with uh, concrete to remove that one so that we can clear the blockage and then uh, continue running. So uh, to carry out that task, we need to do the risk assessment to find out actually the hazards associated with that job. And we discovered that actually the job is, involves work at height and confined space, uh, confined space. And also there's a lot of dust also inside. And then we needed to do uh, the work at height permit. 
and find actually what we can do to find remedial measures uh, for working at a, a height. And to confine this space also, we need to do the permit uh, for the confined space so that we find also remedial measures you know, for working inside uh, the confined space. And all these we have done. And we we'll need actually to open up the hopper so that we have enough ventilation for one to work inside. And the PPE required to do all those jobs, you need the, actually uh, the mandatory PPE, like the safety, uh, the, the hardy hat, the high visibility uh, clothing, uh, glasses, uh, and the safety boots, so that we can go inside and work safely. So all the PPE has been uh, actually uh, organized, everybody has got all that PPE. And then we need also the full body harness because we, are, we will be working at a height. To access uh, the, the uh, access for the hopper, you need to go up the stairs and the handrails are still not installed. That's why we need to work with a full body harness every time. So in the process of uh, any blocking, we had a problem with the jaggy hammer because actually the nipple connecting to the jack hammer actually came off. Uh, then uh, we had to do some uh, repairs to fix it. Uh, but uh, later on, we discovered that uh, it came off again, which meant that the threads inside are now worn out. So this job has been abandoned until the repairs are done properly and certified that it's now fit to be used again. So we we'll commence this job again once the Jagama has been certified fit for the job.